start adding detail to your model railroad in a short amount of time. In this video, I'll be animating a water crane that will operate when a locomotive drives onto a section of track. Let's talk about it. Recently, I've spent a lot of time experimenting with, with electronics. I want to help the modeler understand electronics and what can be achieved with limited knowledge like myself and a modest budget like what I've got. Trust me, if I can do it, you can do it too. Stick around to the end to some other electronic goodness, some tips and tricks. Easy for you to say. Let's talk about the tech that's required uh, to get this little guy up and running. So the DCC command station is the first up. So this, any command station compatible with train controller, JMRI or iTrain will fit the bill. Next item here is the DCC interface that is required to get the DCC voltage down to a usable five volts for the Arduino world. I will, I did do a video some time ago on how I built this little guy. I will link that in the description below. Next piece of tech, you'll need some sort of DCC decoder um, the, a solenoid version. So this one I've built using Arduino Nano. You can use an Uno or a Mega if you wish. I did a video a, a number of weeks ago on this also. I will link in the description to how I built it. You're gonna need some sort of DC power supply, upwards of 16 volts to run the, the crane. I use, personally on my layer, I have a an accessory bus or DC accessory bus at various voltages, but a wall or wall transformer will work just fine also. As the Arduino can only use up to about 40 milliamps at five volts, we also need an Arduino relay so we can switch the 16 volts DC is what the water crane requires to operate. The star of the show here, so to speak, is also the Weissman water crane. I will link below to the product number and the like. Next up, let's have a look at some of the connections here. So the first connections we're going to look at is the A and the B rail basically out of the back of the Z21 to the DCC in of the DCC interface. Then what we need to do is we need to run the DCC signal cable or wire over to the interrupt pin of the Nano, which is, which is pin D2. The DCC interface also requires a five volt DC, so we can run that from the output five volt of the Nano. And likewise, it also needs a ground, so we can also run that off the Nano also. So now we're up to connections between the Nano and the relay. So we also need a five volt DC pin to run the relay. Then to actuate the actual relay, we're going to run from the Nano, the D4 pin, to the input pin of the relay so we, we can use the, the sketch to run that relay. And also the relay also requires a ground so we can pick that up from the ground pin of the Nano also. The water crane will require our 16 volt DC ground pin or ground cable. And so then this, this next part is how we're actually gonna switch it. So we've got the 12, sorry, the 16 volt DC positive to the common binding post of the relay. Then we also need to the normally open pin of the relay, we need to run the control wire out of the water crane. And then also the water crane requires a 16 volt DC positive, which we can either, we will just run to the common of the relay also. What are we trying to achieve here? So the water crane is operated by a solenoid that actuates the crane. So therefore being a solenoid only needs a short pulse of DC at 16 volts in this, on this occasion. What the decoder will do is give a short 300 milliseconds and then which in turn will turn the relay on. In turn the higher 16 volts is then handled by the output side of the relay. What we're doing, we are only switching the 16 volt DC positive output from that transformer. At this point, using train controller, I will set up some code that when the train enters a given section of track, the water crane will activate automatically. And then on the flip side, when the train leaves that given section, it will further actuate the, the water crane and it will put it back to its stationary position.
So here's a little quick uh, rig that's helped me put this all together. So the first component there is the Arduino DCC decoder. Then the next one is the DCC interface. Then we got the one channel relay there. And up there we've got the, the buck converter. So the buck converter brings in the 16 volts and allows me to bring it down to a five volt for the Arduino. What we'll quickly look, look at here is the actuation of it. So I've set it up on address number seven. It's just a matter of toggling through the, the switch commands there. So I've got it as a, a momentary push button there. So you're just using the same, same input, so to speak, and it just toggles backwards and forwards. Please comment below. That's obviously the speed it goes. It probably would be nicer if it was a little bit slower. Um, however, I haven't yet to be able to work out how to do that. So comment below if you, if you could uh, advise me on how to do that. This video is proudly sponsored by PCBWay.com. If you're a tinkerer, inventor, or an advanced electrical engineer, PCBWay have you covered. Or you are seriously missing out. They are passionate about PCBs, but PCBWay do not stop there. They also offer 3D print, injection molding, or CNC machining, assembly, or basic PCB manufacturing. They can do it all for a very competitive price. Check out their awesome services in the link below, and also a special offer to anyone who supports my channel. What we'll do now, we'll just quickly go over to train control and I'll show you how how I've achieved this. So the, the block in question here is this TT out backward. So what we're going to be doing, so the, the train will come off the turntable and then once the occupancy detection takes over within this block, it's going to turn on these three little switches here. Ultimately, we want to turn this switch on. So this switch here is the one that's connected up to the, the local the DCC address of number seven. And how we're gonna achieve that is, so the first thing is to, we've got this little indicator here. So what that actually does, that will fire or become, become true or turn on, so to speak, when we got a train in this block or it's showing some sort of occupancy. So with that, it then turns on to the next little switch. Then we'll quickly go over to that little switch. And what that then does is the trigger of this switch. So it, it turns itself on by what they call the flagman here. Then the operations tab is what it's actually trying, trying to achieve. So we've got a delay of five, five seconds so that allows enough time for the train to come into that block. So as soon as the, the occupancy detection fires off, it'll count down five seconds and then it'll give one pulse switch. So I'll just quickly, almost like if you if you lock in your finger, you switch it on and then switch it off to the DCC accessory button. So what that does, it then turns on the DCC accessory button, which in turn activates the the DCC decoder, the Arduino DCC decoder. At that point, it actuates the water crane. On the flip side, so how do we get it to put it away? It's in its home position um, once the train leaves the block. What? The way it's gonna transverse, it'll go to this TT out backwards and it'll end up in this BY3. So once it hits the BY3, the block will become unoccupied as we're representing here. And then what from that it does is it another operations tab because that switch is now off what it then does is it gives the the pulse the switch or the dcc switch another pulse which in turn fires up the the arduino solenoid decoder and then it'll put the the water crane back to its home position so this is the portion of track that i'll of the shown on so we basically up here we've got the little t5 coming on to the turntable it'll turn on the turntable and go to the out track and then when the front wheels actually pick up some current they'll they'll fire off the occupancy detection so in five seconds what it'll do you'll see the crane will start to actuate so i'll push those little buttons within train controller and then i'll just move the, the locomotive forward to adjust where it needs to be to fill up the water so at this point we're blast of the little horn again and then we'll drive off out of that block so once the the t5 is out of the block and the occupancy detection within train controller is no longer active you'll see that the the water crane will wait another five seconds and then it'll go back to its home position shortly as it's doing there now
So that's the end of the video. So like all my previous videos, I have three questions to ask. So if you could comment in the description or in the comment section below, that'd be great. So number one, would you use a water, would you animate a water crane such as this or other sort of what they call funicular? Number two, if so, how would you tweak it or make improvements to it that might make it look work better? And number three, like always, if you wanna give me some feedback on my videos, that'd be great as well. All comment in the description below. So don't forget to subscribe. Click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming comment. If you think it's a good video, give it a big thumbs up. Apparently that feeds the greedy little YouTube algorithm, which tells them that it's a good video, assuming you think it's a good video, and we'll put more video, more videos in front of you. So thanks again, and I'll see you next time.